Hey, what's up, homies? So, you know, this is just like to build up on that whole, you know, carnivore diet thing. And there's this carnivore JT guy. Super chill dude. Um, yeah, and he's been doing an experiment where it's, can I get fat on 4,000 calories of... He did 21 days of carnivore diet. So he said, can I get fat on 4,000 calories of carnivore diet in 21 days? And now he's on the SAD, which is standard American diet. SAD is standard American diet. And now, so he's gone from doing 21 days of carnivore, 4,000 calories a day. Can he get fat? Um, and then now he's doing, can I get fat on 4,000 calories a day on standard American diet? So... Uh, let's see if we can scroll all the way down. Uh, there we go. Day four. Okay, so let's go. This guy here, by the way, he's super interesting. We're going to actually quickly... Um, oh. Let's go back. Anyway. Before we get... Uh, can I get fat? Day two. Hold on. Let's see if we can find... Uh, Let's see if we can find, uh, so that was day one. He's very chill, this guy, and he answers all the, qu all the comments immediately, like really quickly. So let's see. This Benjamin Bickman guy, he's totally, totally interesting. Um, so let's see. My first time, it's okay, we're getting close. Let's see. his results are can I get fat the battle of diets carnivore starting Friday April I will take the South a carnivore diet let's go there so oh no here okay well let's just go with this anyway so starting Friday April 5th I will undertake this uh, S, uh, the standard American portion of 4,000 calories experiment carnivore diet he did 21 days 4,000 4, calories per day on average 317 grams of fat, 262 grams of protein, and 9 grams of carbs. This is per day. Uh, thermic effect, 404 calories. Uh, I guess that's, I don't know. Standard American diet estimated, so 21 days, 4,000 calories per day, 156 grams of fat, 150 grams of protein, 500 grams of carbs. And those are his macros. And what's super interesting is if we go back, he must have mentioned it just a little bit before um damn it it's, i don't know why it's so difficult to find like his results but um here So he lost four pounds in total trying to get fat on carnivore diet, eating 4,000 calories a day for 21 days. And he lost four pounds. He didn't gain any weight from eating 4,000 calories a day over a 21-day period on carnivore diet. And he is training. He is going to the gym. That's one thing to consider. So what this is really referring to is that it's this long discussion, this long argument that, hey, calories are calories. If you eat 4,000 calories of anything, you're going to get fat. And the interesting thing is it's also very difficult for people to break away from that because they think in terms of thermodynamics. But again, we're not talking about burning a piece of coal here. We're talking about biochemistry and, uh, you know, if you're if you're mixing two chemicals here, something different is going to happen. If you mix uh, 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 something dif different is going to happen with that experiment than if you're mixing other chemicals that are different in another vessel, right? So you, you, in a way, what's going on here is we're having different we're having two different types of chemical reactions. If you're on a carnivore diet or if you're on a carb diet. What's super interesting is that so he went 21 days lost four pounds total um 
Then we go all the way up back to uh, it's disorientating. There we go. And let's see if he he didn't give the results there. He did at some point. So he was immediately gaining weight. Um, day four, back on the weight gain train, up another 2.4 pounds after day four, bringing me to 6.6 .6 total pounds weight gain in four days of the standard American diet. All he's really done is reduce the amount of fat intake and basically just increase the carb intake by 500 calorie by 500 grams. So he's still doing 4,000 calories a day. But he's increased his carb intake from roughly around less than 10 grams to 4, 500 grams. What's interesting is that, like, um, you know, 6.6 .6 pounds total in four days. That's, you know, three kilos, including the water weight. It's almost as if that 500 grams of carbs is directly related to one or two grams of body fat storage. So... Again, it's when we're looking at, at this data and we're looking at his experiment here, um, what we see is that it's not calorie intake that will determine whether you get fat or not. It is really quite easily what you eat. And there is a lot of there is a lot of doctors. There's a lot of people like Ben Jimin Binkman uh, on the internet that are, you know, T talking about this this type of this trend started you know decades ago with the um, Atkins diet but you know Atkins was like the first step into this whole you know discovery and you know already a hundred two hundred years ago people already sort of knew this but there wasn't sort of a scientific background there was just more like anecdotal evidence you know personal experimentation turned into this and then of course there's you know the uh, grandma's tales you know in greek times and in you know medieval times and uh, for example with napoleon they dealt with scurvy by uh, eating horse meat so they would slaughter some horses eat the horse because the horse is so high in vitamin c and they would also stop eating plants so the thing with the vitamin c deficiency for example is that i think i've said this in previous videos is that it's not actually so much about being deficient or not eating enough vitamin C is that the problem is the carbohydrates and the vitamin C they um, compete for the same pathways in the body so when you're eating a lot of carbohydrates you're actually preventing um, smaller amounts of vitamin C from being able to have full effect so on a carnivore diet you don't actually need to eat all that much vitamin C but when you're eating carbs like a standard American diet, you're going to need to like tenfold the amount of vitamin C you eat, right? So the 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 funny thing about scurvy is that it's actually it's vitamin deficiency through eating carbohydrates, really, because it's not actually vitamin deficiency. You have it's it's actually not allowing the vitamin C to get to where it needs to go. Benjamin Bickman, he goes into it like scientifically where he's talking about insulin. Um, it's much more, you know, scientific with Benjamin. It's much, much easier to, to look at that into like greater detail. Carnivore is, it's Carnivore JT, he's, he's pretty good at explaining this stuff too. But that's just a couple guys that are chill, you know. And, and you know, this guy's doing the experiments on himself. And, and the thing is, from my personal experience, I wasn't expecting this. I did the math myself a couple years ago or a year ago and I didn't my math didn't add up to this and um, during the winter holidays I actually gained uh, a, a bit of weight just from you know three weeks of eating whatever the fuck I wanted and after winter I tried to put my work pads back on and they didn't fit and I was just like wow that's you know that's really weird because I've just spent like the last six months, you know, losing weight and uh, I must have gained a lot of weight over the winter holidays and that put me into a shock. That made me realize like there's something wrong with my math and luckily this guy's actually kind of gone into it with greater detail and sort of this is this adds up completely 
with the experience that I had over the winter holidays um, because I started eating baguettes again. I fucking love baguettes, man. I uh, A good baguette, you, you put some tomato paste on there and some fucking cheese, throw it in the oven or... That, shit, that shit's delicious. But again, um, the carbs is what makes you fat. It's not it's not how much you're eating, really. It's what you're eating. And um, so according to Benjamin, what he's saying... Oh, look right here. What he's saying is that it's a combination of a calorie surplus with your insulin response. So it's not... You're going to gain a significant amount of weight if you're overeating in, with carbs. So it's, you have to do basically what he's doing. You have to eat a lot of calories over your daily recommendation, say 3,000, 4,000 plus, and have the carbohydrates in order for the fat gain to take place, which is super interesting. Um, and by the looks of it, what they're saying is that, okay, if you're eating, if you're eating a low calorie diet, then the carbohydrates are not all that effective at making you gain weight, but they'll prov they'll make it more difficult for you to lose weight. So, unfortunately, again, the food industry is heavily uh, manipulated by the food corporations. And, um, you know, it, it, one thing that um, we will always have a difficulty understanding is just how savage, um, how vile, and and how how dangerous uh, a lot of the the these these people are in these mega food corporations you know we're talking about people who advertise you know snickers bars as a energy supplement for kids playing soccer you know they 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 change their labeling they change their you know they have this whole thing where they, you know, they, they start adding little footballs and football shoes to the packaging and they've got, you know, this whole thing going where it's like, yeah, you, you actually need this to recover from the energy you use during training, right? Um, which is absurd. It's, you know, it's like, it's like um, protein chocolate bars, just the most absurd thing on earth. If you're going to pay... A protein chocolate bar has what? 10, 15 grams of protein in it, weighs about 70 grams, weighs and costs 4 euros, you know, 3 to 5 euros. I can get 400 grams of meat for the same price, and it's got 80 grams of protein. There are dry sausages you can eat straight off the go that have 3 or 4 times the amount of protein, no carbohydrates, taste way better, and... Uh, uh, I mean, is healthy compared to, I mean, it's, you know, it's actually healthy. Um, so that's something to take into consideration. Like people often wonder, oh, but meat is expensive. Well, meat is expensive if you're buying all this other useless shit. If you actually compare the prices to a lot of fast food, like a lot of crisps um, and ready-made stuff at the store, you look at the kilo price. You know, it can be like 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, all the way up to 30 euros a kilo. And, you know, and uh, uh, and then you think to yourself, well, hold on. You know, this this uh, filet of this beef filet is like 30 euros a kilo. You know, this 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 cut from, you know, like this, you can get like two kilo slab of super high quality meat for the same kilo price it's just you have to buy like the whole thing in one go so it's a pretty interesting thing you're actually saving a lot of money uh, on the carnivore diet so very interesting that this guy already after four days has gained six and a half pounds that's three kilos now mind you we're talking like we're talking that a, a significant portion of that over 25 percent is water retention because carbs have a water retention. They retain water dramatically. So, yeah. Um, maybe we read this through just to get a... and Just to kind of get the scientific uh, uh, perspective on this. And 
So Benjamin Franklin, Benjamin Franklin, lol, Benjamin Bickman, um, he states that the lower insulin gates, the more insulin get, the more the lower insulin gets, the more impossible it becomes to store fat. I've previously elaborated on my frustrations with any study that utilizes a low calorie diet to compare the effects of low fat versus low carb because of the confounding variable of reduced insulin in both diets. A low calorie Low carbohydrate diet with, will obviously lower insulin, but so too will a low calorie, low fat diet compared to a standard Western diet. Every study that has used a low calorie, low fat diet that has measured insulin has found reduced insulin, making it largely impossible to truly test the relevance of calories versus insulin in understanding obesity. Thus, we need a hypercaloric version of both diets, high calorie, low fat versus high calorie, low carb. Unfortunately, this has never really been done in humans, but as of today, it's been done in animals. Charlot et al. Front, oh, maybe we'll fatten mice on a high calorie Western diet. High fat, high carb. After 10 weeks, a subset of the now fattened animals were switched over to a high calorie, low carb diet. Importantly, the animals continued to eat the same amount of calories between the groups. There was no statistical difference. Despite this identical calorie consumption, the group that had switched to a low-carb diet began losing weight immediately. Importantly, this group alone experienced a significant reduction in insulin. Now, mind you, mice are not humans. We always got to remember that. And humans are carnivores, and mice are omnivores. In addition to significant fat loss, the livers of the animals were also significantly leaner on the low-carb diet, despite continuing to eat a high-calorie diet. Now I can imagine the raging by those who insist that the laws of thermodynamics are immutable. I agree, in a closed system, however the body is an open system and there is energy exchange that can't be fully or easily quantified. How can these animals be losing weight while eating the same amount of calories as the insulin spiking western diet fed litter mates? I have never seen this word in my life before. Oi. An animal born in the same litter as... Oh, okay, litter mates. It could be two words, you know. Though this ha wasn't measured in the... So how can these animals be losing weight while eating the same amount of calories as the insulin-spiking Western diet-fed litter mates? Though this um, wasn't measured in the study, as insulin drops, the body begins wasting energy because it literally can't store it. This wasting is manifested as increased energy expenditure studies by Ludwig Johnson, myself, and more, and two, ketone excretion. Remember, ketones have a caloric value. Take a moment to appreciate what these results can mean for a human. If you teach that weight loss can only come from cutting calories without addressing the underlying hyperinsulinemia, you're inadvertently promoting a strategy based on hunger, and hunger always wins. You see, that's a really important aspect. However, if your strategy is primarily based on lowering insulin, then energy consumption and use will take care of itself. So that's the thing. Like, sure. Go on a calorie restriction. If you want to drop shitloads of fucking weight, stop eating for two months. Don't eat anything. And you will dump like 100 kilos. But the thing is, you know, that actually sounds kind of easy. And in practice, it should be easy because it's such a simple rule. Oh, okay, I'm just going to not, you know, I just don't think about food. I just don't do it. The thing is, like, you know, it's it doesn't even matter how... Like for me, for example, personally, is I adore potato chips. I love French fries. I crave baguette and pizza. Like those those four things, like uh, pizza, French fries, potato chips, to me are some of the most delicious things in the world. And you know, if I want to lose weight, um, my strategy has always been like an extreme calorie deficit, where I go, I try to, basically what I do is I go under a thousand calories a day. I eat once a day, about an hour before I go to bed. The nice thing with that is if you keep that rule to you don't eat anything until like right before bed, it's very easy to control that in the sense that, uh, in the sense that, for example, if you have a meal sometime during the day, it's much easier to start snacking afterwards or to eat some more because it's like, oh, you know, I ate, so whatever. So, very interesting. Benjamin Bickman, um, yeah, and so, 
you know, if you're if you're starving yourself, you're going to start craving more and more foods and then you're going to plan your off day. But the thing is, when we look at this, right, this guy who on the first day gained a, over a pound. So he gained like 500 grams of body fat in one day. He's this guy is gaining this is four days, 6.6 .6 pounds. Like we let's go here. Uh, pounds to kilograms. Let's see exactly what it is. In four days of eating the standard American diet, he gained three kilos. Of which 25 to 50% currently is water retention. He's gaining at least 500 grams of fat a day. By adding 500 grams of calories to a hypercaloric diet. Isn't that insane? How long does it take to burn 500 grams of body fat from fasting and not eating anything? Well, if you're burning 2,500 calories a day, um, my calculator. If you're burning 2,500 calories a day, so there's nine calories per gram of fat. You'd be lucky to burn about a quarter kilo, half pound, roughly, of fat in a day, just from not eating anything. This number can go up or down depending on how long you're fasting for. But generally, this is kind of like the go-to. So in one day of overeating, you have reversed the weight loss of two days of fasting isn't that insane that's huge so of course if you fast for a whole week right you eat for i can't watch this guy like eating in the background i have to like scroll up hold on i'll just go here so you know if you're <laughs> you can fast for five days right so this is the amount of uh, fat you're losing uh, let's let's round it up. Oh, okay, so you fast for five days. You've lost one point four kilos. Let's say you're even if you're eating like a small little meal once a day, you'll probably lose around this much, right? Then you spend two days, right? I'm just gonna remember. So then you spend two days. Um. So we'll do minus, do we have brackets on this? Ah! So 2,500 calories a day. That's around 300 grams of body fat. You do that for five days, you're losing 1.3, 1.4 kilos of body fat. Then you spend, you're gaining 500 grams. So now you go on this, you go, you have an off day and you're eating, you're, you're, you're going all out. You're like, I just fasted for a whole week. I'm going to have my off day. I'm going to have my off day. Um, that's just, I'm going to eat Saturday, Sunday. So, in total, from fasting a whole week and having, from fasting a whole week, five days, losing 1.4 kilos with two days off where you're eating carbs standard American diet, you regain about a kilo. It's actually, that's body fat. You're actually gaining more than that because of the water retention. This is the 500 grams of body fat without the water retention, which is like another 500. So just like the weight alone will be much higher, but I'm just doing the body fat. So for a whole week of, you know, um, hurting yourself, I guess you could say, of like being dedicated, and then 
you know, you're starving yourself, you're hungry, you're craving food, all of a sudden, you just overate for a couple of days. And not only that, you've, because the uh, fasting, what happens when you're fasting is that it slow, it lowers your metabolism dramatically, so that you actually inherently increase the amount of fat that you do store when you start eating again. So you're looking at a total result of 400 grams of um, body. I'm, maybe there's something wrong with the math. I, I you know, I'm, I'm a little bit tired, so... Um, but so far, a whole week of fasting combined with one or t with two days of of off day, uh, you have just basically diminished your uh, results to as if you had been fasting for one and a half days. You see, so like the math is not good, you know, and and so yes. A calorie restriction really helps but eventually you know you're gonna get kind of hungry and you're gonna want to overeat and so when do you do that you know because you're gonna be reversing your results pretty quickly and it's gonna it's gonna hurt because it's gonna confuse you too it's like oh I just you know I did a 14 day fast and then I ate uh, then I had an off day where I ate you know 8,000 calories of pizza and fucking soda and yeah, you gained like a kilo and now you just sort of wasted all that struggle for a pizza. And so you're almost back to where you started just after two days. So yeah, like um, this is the math I wish I had figured out before Christmas, of course. But um, again, going back to what these guys are saying, it's not, it's, it's not, it's, um, it's not how much you're eating, it's what you're eating. So if you're going to have an off day, just eat fuckloads more of anything that doesn't have carbohydrates in it, you know? Learn how to make jerky. Learn how to make dry sausage. Learn how to do, learn how to, how to prepare meat in advance so that you have all sorts of different types of dry meats uh, and stuff like that. Uh, because at least, for example... You know, one thing that helps is like how much money are you spending on uh, on carbohydrates? Because actually, when you look at it and you do the math, chances are you're going to be spending a lot more money on carbohydrates than you are on meat, and that meat isn't actually more expensive. Meat, you just have to pay more for that piece of meat up front, but the kilo price is actually um, lower. Uh, so if we go back to um, the calculator, let's trash all this. Where's all the fucking CE? I think it's CE. So here's something that's super interesting. And again, like so important. Nobody does the math on, on their groceries. But the groceries, man, that's where those pennies turn to dollars. Because... You know, that chocolate bar, yeah, it's two and a half euros. You know, it's two dollars. It's 50, 50 cents or something. That bag of chips, you know, I, 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 I see this with my parents all the time. My mother, she's, you know, buying a bag of potato chips, you know, uh, once a day almost. She snacks on that shit all the time. And, I mean, these people have no idea how bad that stuff is for them. But, you know, you're spending two dollars... A day. That's his conservative number. Those crisps cost way more than that. They actually. Let's go full price. Let's go three. That's around how much they cost. If you're eating five bags of those a week, right? So you're spending fifteen dollars, fifteen euros a week on these chips, right? And there's fifty-three weeks in a year. You've almost spent. You've spent almost eight hundred euros on eating nobody you know if you ask somebody would you pay 800 euros for this smartphone they would say no i wouldn't but then at the same time they're saying yes to spending that much on potato chips you might as well buy those 53 you might as well buy Sorry, the headset turn off. You might as well buy all your chips in one go, you know? So, it's pretty crazy. Now, how about bread? Oops. 
How about bread? Can I delete this one? Oh, fuck. Whatever. Bread. So a household of, you know, three, four, five people. So say a uh, mother, father, and three children. How much bread are they eating a day? They're eating maybe one to two loaves a day. So let's do one and a half loaves a day. Um, actually, first of all, let's keep it simple because my brain is... is uh, it's been sober for too long. Um, so bread will cost you two, three, four, sometimes even five dollars, five euros, right? So one loaf of bread, uh, let's see, let's say 1.5 loaves of bread. Whoops, what's going on here? One and a half loaves of bread, and it's times... Let's be real about the number, 3.5 euros or dollars per loaf of bread. Okay, that's five euros, five and, and a half, five and a quarter euros a day on bread. This is like finished bread prices, by the way. This is, this is, this is bread you buy from the store, okay? So a household family is spending five euros and quarter five and quarter euros on bread a day without even realizing it. How many days are there in a year? 365. You're spending $2,000 a year on bread. And these people are probably also buying uh, three to four bags of crisps a day. So you might as well add this to there. So this plus this What's going on? Can I do this? So, hold on. This plus what the shit? Why won't it let me? You think these? Okay. Well, I, well let's just do one nine sixteen dot twenty five plus seven nine five. Whoa, 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 whoa. Why is this so difficult to freaking do? Come on. 1916.25 plus 795. So almost 3,000 fucking euros on just crisps and bread. Mind you, a kilo of flour costs a euro, and that's enough to make you know, three kilos of bread, which is like 30 loaves of bread or something. You can make, you can make like, for the price of, for the price of like half a loaf of bread you buy from the store, you can make like 10 to 30 fucking loaves of bread yourself. The taste better is healthier, you know? So if you have to eat bread, you shouldn't be buying it from the store. You should be learning how to make it yourself. Because you're going to be saving thousands of euros. This is just over one year, by the way, guys. And the crazy thing is, what's super interesting is that students, you know, um, I know a lot of students, they're buying one cup of coffee a day from the cafeteria, which is what, two and a half euros times... I would say, let's not do 365, but let's just put up a random number of days that they're at school. Like, let's put 210. 525 euros on coffee a year. A student. That's like, for a student uh, apartment, that's like two months of rent. And these people are complaining about not being able to afford things. Um, you know, so it is pretty crazy. And the thing is, on top of that, is it's carbohydrates. So you're paying, you're paying almost three thousand dollars a year. I mean, this let's let's round it up to three thousand dollars a year household family. So so from one person to a th to a per to a household of five, you're spending somewhere close to three thousand euros a year just on bread, on crisps and candy. I mean, you could buy your whole family. 
you could buy your whole family. Let's let's see. Like, what's a? Let's uh let's do it. Let's see. Three thousand euros divided by five. Six hundred euros. You could buy everyone in your family a six hundred dollar smartphone. Wouldn't that be better for everybody than you know fifty fucking packs of potato chips a year? Then there's you know still on top of this price we have all the sodas. You know how many people are buying sodas and how much you know how much is a soda? I mean, a six pack of Coca Cola cans is about five euros. People are buying those you know once a week. You know, so five euros times fifty three. Again, people are spending unbelievable amounts of money on these small little uh on getting fucking fat and not just getting fat but like they're paying thousands of euros a year to feel miserable to feel helpless to be overweight to be super unhealthy uh you know, and then, and then it's like, you could just save that money and then buy yourself, you know, for example, like, wouldn't you rather have When, why is there a Hoover in the picture? Wouldn't you rather have the most advanced smartphone on the market? Wouldn't you wouldn't you rather have the most badass and most advanced smartphone ever made than fifty bags of potato chips? You know? Fifty loaves of bread? I don't know. I'm just, you know, when you break it down and you use mathematics, you pull out a basic fucking calculator, you do the math, you realize very quickly that, you know, oh, you know, everybody's talking about, oh, when my parents were young, they could afford to buy a house at this age. Yeah. They probably weren't, you know, buying a three euro cup of coffee every day when they go out. A bag of crisps, a bag of candy, a fucking loaf of bread, and, you know, a pair of shoes. Because, like, again, when you think about this, right, this math, it, it go, it's, it, you know, we're, it's not just, it's not just the, you know, at, in reality, it's not just the bread, it's not just the candy, it's not just the, 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 um, coffee it's not just you know everything we mentioned here the people who generally have uh this type of purchasing behavior this type of consumerism are also generally the type of people who are also buying a new jacket a new pair of shoes you know a new pair of glasses and then now you're adding 200 300 400 dollars on top of that and how often are they buying a new pair of clothes, right? Maybe once a month? Once every two months? Maybe it's more than that. Um, especially girls. How, you know. Uh, so it is nice to be able to buy yourself new things, but people often don't realize how much time has actually gone between the times they've rewarded themselves with something new. And, uh, you know, this is like... It's again it's it's we've been we've been sort of poisoned by marketing industry to really spend all our money and big food big pharma they've done the mathematics they understand how much money is involved in this you know they're the 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 um, you know it's people are literally spending thousands and thousands of dollars and euros a year on eating food that 
you know, remember this fucking list. The top leading causes of death on Earth. Should we just use the World Health Organization? Uh, whatever. <sighs> Ischemic heart disease. I mean, again, this is from eating carbohydrates. We know this now. There's a bunch of studies. I think I put them up on a previous video. Stroke. Again, this is from overeating carbohydrates. Chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. I mean, can we even copy paste that? Like, look at here. The world's biggest killer is ischemic heart disease, responsible for 16% of the world's total death. Since 2000, the largest increase in deaths has been from this disease, rising by more than 2 million to 8.9 million deaths in 2019. Stroke and chronic obstructive pulmonary disease are at second and third in causes of death, responsible for approximately 11% and 6% of total deaths, respectively. Again, like, that's all from... You know, these people paid in their lifetime... Tens of thousands of euros and dollars eating pure fucking garbage. Not just pure garbage. Like, even that, like, it's not even that. Like, you can eat this stuff if you want to, but you don't have to spend, you know, if you, a pack of potatoes, right, your typical pack of, uh, a pack of crisps, right? Um, look at this, like, Jesus Christ. You can, oh, yeah, you want to spend 150 fucking euros on your, um, we don't want a multi-pack of crisps. Oh, let's just go to Google. I, I don't understand. A, a typical weight of a typical bag of crisps. I, I wish there was just a simple answer, like, come on. Oh, this is total bullshit. Come on, guys. Um... bag of nachos seriously i don't know why this is so difficult here three euros three euros almost three euros see these are all about three euros right let's go to luchito luchito oh look it's on a 30 percent discount um actually no i wanted to make another point so this doesn't this is not this is not what we want to do here uh Here, Broadway. People will eat a whole bag of this. I've seen, I've seen some, some, some pothead buddies just demolish these kind of bags. So three euros, three hundred twenty-five grams. Okay. So how much, how much does a large potato weigh? Let's see. So a large potato can weigh anywhere between eight. To 28 ounces 227 to 800 grams you know so like this is like one potato you're eating but you're also paying you're paying like three euros for one potato you might as well go and buy your fucking potato slice it up throw it in the fucking oil and cook it yourself and it'll cost you like 20 cents like you're, and, and the crazy thing is, how much carbohydrates there is in just one potato, um, it's unbelievable. Like, potatoes will make you fucking gain weight. So, you know, a fat potato, a, a fat fucking potato, you know, like a proper sized, you know, football freaking potato, it's 800 grams. That's more than twice the amount that there is in this mega bag of Toffel Broadway sour cream and onion chips. <laughs> and there's sugar in here as well. They've got carbs and added sugar and everything. So you're paying a premium price. You know, this is this is this is this is actually kind of tasty one. I like these neutral chips. Mega bag 305. Will this make you fat? Yeah, it will make you fat. Of course, everybody, if you ask anybody in the world, will this bag of, you know, will eating this make you fat? They'll probably say yes. Well, I'll t I'll look at this. 
There's about one potato worth of chips in there. Isn't that interesting? And you're paying, you know, three euros. What's the what's the you know price per kilogram for potato? Actually, let's do it in Finnish. Kilo hinta peruna. It's like a euro a kilo. Right? So, three of these bags, which is let's just say nine euros, you're paying almost ten times the price of potatoes for a potato. <sighs> so again, like the math is really bad, you know? But again, this is what profiting is about. It's about gathering raw materials that are affordable and cheap, processing them, and selling them at a premium, and you offer a delicious product. So... You know, that's a huge markup. And these companies, you know, they're not buying their potatoes at a euro a kilo. They're buying at like 10 cents per kilo. So that's why these food corporations are making so much money. They, they, they're making sh boatloads of, of money because they, 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 they're selling an addiction and the profit margins are enormous and they're also completely subsidized by the state. Why does a McDonald's cheeseburger cost a euro why well, it used to cost a euro now it's two euros because actually the government subsidizes such a huge and enormous portion of the uh of the agricultural industry that supports the fast food industry you know this is why they want everybody to be vegan this is why or this is partially why they want everybody to be vegan because this is vegan this is what a vegan diet is right it's fast food right it's 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 asking people ten times the price for a process, processed good, right? Um, you know, and then the more people buy that stuff, the more land the billionaires can own and justify owning for farms that you know starve the soil of nutrients. So, you know, this is like a I think a super important video to put things into perspective because, you know, we're spending a lot of money. You know, if I go out and buy this phone, right? My parents are going to be like, oh, why are you wasting all that money on, 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 a, you just buy yourself a cheap, you know, you know blah, 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 blah. why is this a total waste of money? And it's like, yeah, but, you know, you spent like 3,000 euros this year on, you know, getting diabetes. Like, you, you, you know, you, you spent 3,000 euros this year to die faster. Like, you know what I mean? Like, it's like, it's, it's so, people will do anything to protect, um, themselves from being, you know, uh, challenged, you know, and, uh, I'd like to buy this phone. I think it would be super badass. I think it would be super badass. I, I need a new phone and I was thinking it'd be cool to actually try this phone out. Uh, but, you know, again, I've been saving all my money. I haven't been spending it on any fast food. I only spend it on the things that I need. And I've been, sa I've been, um, I've been, yeah, saving, I've been saving my, my freaking money for months now to, to get a new phone. So, uh, let's see how this one is. It's probably pretty decent. But, um, yeah, going back to what we're talking about, you know, I can, I can repeat this again. Um, but as of today, it's been done in animals. So, uh, this experiment, Charlotte Elva, Frontier Sin, oh, here, 
A fattened mice on a high-calorie Western diet, high fat, high carb after 10 weeks, a subset of now fattened animals were switched over to a high-calorie, low-carb diet. Importantly, the animals com continued to eat the same amount of calories between groups. There was no statistical difference. Despite this identical calorie consumption, the group that switched to a low-carb diet began losing weight immediately. Importantly, this group alone experienced a significant reduction in insulin. So here we go. This is the study. I'll link it to this video. See, just beautiful. So I think that's it for today, guys. I think this was an awesome video. Like, I like kind of like looking at this kind of stuff and just doing the math and, you know, um, uh, maybe I troll them. Um, but, um, it would be, yeah, I, I like doing these kind of videos from time to time, especially when there's a little bit of math involved in this kind of like, you know, this, this mind blowing data where it's like, wow, it makes so much sense. When you, when you, when you stick it all into a fucking calculator, it, it all starts to make sense, you know? And what's amazing is like, how are we in 2024? How is this still like a problem to think about? Like, how is this still a confusion to everybody? How, how are we all still confused about this? We're supposed to be in the age of data, the age of information. We're supposed to, you know, we're supposed to, to be at this, uh, this, 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 tipping point between primitive and super uh and super advanced society but again like we've we've been we've been highly subverted by the um, by the food industry we've been so we've been we've been so subverted by the food industry that we have like you know even high school middle school like we've been so badly misguided with our understanding of of the world around us by 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 the I mean, you know, again, it's hard to say, you know, if it's deliberate or accidental, it's a mixture of both, you know, because, you know, we as peasants have been eating bread for thousands of years, you know, we've been eating plants for thousands of years, and, uh, but also, you know, obesity has, has been around for a long time, I mean, sumo wrestling in, in Japan, you know, you wouldn't have sumo wrestling without rice, uh, history of sumo wrestling. Oh, crap. So, BC. <laughs> Sumo Ozumo is an ancient form of wrestling which has been which has long been in the national sport of Japan. Its origins go back to Yayoi period, 300 BC to 300 CE. Nobody else in the world knew how to get this fucking fat. We're talking about like a, a sport that's completely predominantly surrounded around people being highly, you know, obese being you know gorilla gorilla mode and uh you know so these people figured out how to do it and if you look at their diet they're eating an enormous amount of food a day um sumo wrestlers diet i have a bit of a problem here with this computer where it insists on going to well High calorie, high protein diet. <laughs> it's funny how they kind of avoid the carbs. Huh? Oh, it's the high protein. Um, here. I mean, here it says they consume about 20,000 calories a day. You know. They're, they're, I think it's it's interesting how they're they're not uh, talking about the rice, you know, uh, how much rice does a sumo wrestler eat in a day? To complement their mighty meal, sumo wrestlers eat about 5 to 10 bowls of rice and copious amounts of beer required for empty calories. 
a healthy rikishi sumo wrestler made down as many as six pints during the midday yeah so these guys are these guys <laughs> these guys are 400 pound alcoholic fucking gorillas <laughs> um Yeah, sometimes consuming up to 20 bowls of rice in a single sitting. <laughs> Calories in one bowl of rice, 267. Calories in 100 grams of rice. One bowl of rice. Oh, let's go with this number here. We go there. And the extreme version here, the extreme number. Um, so that's how many calories there was in one bowl of rice. The extreme was 20 bowls of rice in one meal. So they're eating 5,000 calories. Some of these guys are eating 5 fucking thousand calories of rice in a single meal you know kind of wraps things up <laughs> jesus i'll see you guys later yeah